everyone. Welcome back to the Earth on Survival Guide, the podcast for all disciplines, paths, players, and game masters. With your questers, Josh and Dan, I am Dan. I am Josh. And on today's podcast, we will be discussing all things Renelical and Elvish, I guess, because uh, we're going to talk about the Escalanus Renel. So if you have any questions for us about anything you're going to hear tonight or anything you've heard us talk about for the previous 190 some odd episodes, please contact us at edsgpodcast at gmail.com. We will look forward to answering your questions or more specifically having Josh answer your questions because that's not my role in this show. One quick thing I do want to mention before we get into this, I finally made the decision to abandon Twitter. There you go. So both my personal account and the survival guide accounts, they still exist just to avoid the possibility of them ending up getting squatted on. Yeah. But I have signed out of Twitter and like shut off my notifications and I am not going to be following those anymore i think actually i may log in back one last time yeah just to make sure that i've got like the link tree thing in my bio if mm -hmm. you want to find me other places you can i am on mastodon i am on blue sky i am on facebook although i don't really do much survival guide stuff on yeah. facebook i'm on of course the discord you can find me if you need me I was thinking of you know, joining threads, but I just haven't had any time to really consider anything, really. <laughs> I have not done threads. I'm on Instagram, but that's mostly to just follow people. I don't really post at all. Yeah, fair. Me too. Because it's more pictures and I don't do a lot of picture stuff. Fair. So anyway, that's that's what's going on there. Uh, so on to the Escalanus Renell. Uh, this is a second in our series on the Elvish... Clan third, really third. I'm already behind third. Yeah, we okay. had the Carathaska and the Davinar. I've lost track of everything right now. Anyway, look, man, it is the end of the year. <laughs> we are slowly scaling that hill towards 200. <laughs> it is the holiday season, and this is the redo episode because I already deleted the file the first time, so we're doing this yeah. twice. Which is look, I did not mention in my little thing the I just said technical difficulties. I didn't say Dan deleted the Dan file wholeheartedly. Yeah. Deleted his half of the audio. Accidentally deleted my no, entire No, that's file. fine. Look, 200 episodes, <laughs> we have actually had fewer of these than one might think. Yes. Yes. We've had a couple of episodes <laughs> where my audio was going through my webcam rather than my regular microphone. Yep. Those were fun. Uh, we did have one where something crashed and we had we had one or two where we did have to redo. Oh, yeah. Remember the Saturday morning quick, quick redos because my files were so corrupted on my old computer or whatever. Something. But yeah, reasons. I mean, you know, not. I mean, look, we're, we are a production team of two. <laughs> exactly. <sighs> Sometimes shit happens. Absolutely. Oh, by the way, actually, one other thing. I don't know if you saw this on the FASA Discord, Dan. No, I haven't seen anything for a while. Somebody was incredibly kind on the FASA Discord uh, the other day. Their check is in the mail. User uh, by the name of Metal Fan, that's with two L's on metal, just wanted to say I've been listening to the EDSG podcast for a few weeks now, I'm around episode 40, Yeah, and wanted to say I appreciate your approach to sensitive subjects and the empathy you show in your comments. I love the fact that you used your platform to speak up about the BLM protests. So this was the George Floyd thing now, like three years ago, yes. two year, two and a half years ago, mm -hmm. to curb down on crapping on other systems yep, <laughs> and to make comments about the need for Aboriginal voices to be heard when implementing different regions into the Earth Dawn system. Absolutely. We are all for inclusion. So we are doing something right. And uh, by the time he catches up or they catch up here, thank you. I said thank you in the, yeah, the discord absolutely. as well but it's always heartening to get feedback like that not that i need the recognition because it's the right thing to do yeah but it is nice for that to be recognized yeah it's good to get the confirmation back great i i get a cookie <laughs> an extra one i get an extra cookie tonight i finished off the whole box but i get one from the next box of cookies that i ate so <laughs> maybe his name is me tall fan because there's two l's uh, maybe. I don't know. Uh, anyway. Figure that out. 
and it, it got a bunch of little like agreed like icons like emoji things attached cool. to it so cool. a, a bunch of other people thought the same thing. yay but it was nice to have it expressed thank you me tall fan we'll, we'll take it uh <laughs> there's two l's i gotta go with tall anyway so on to the escalanus Rennell. And if I can think back of what we talked about a few weeks ago and try this again, we'll be in great shape. So this is traditionally the Rennell that supplies the most warders to the Queen's service. So this is their spot yes. in the blood wood and the political machinations therein. The leader is Kethos Escalanus, who is a mover and shaker. We will talk a lot about Kethos this episode and a couple more because he's involved in a lot of stuff. Kethos Escalanus, by the way, is a person who created the vast majority of the Ritual of Thorns. So that's where this Rennell comes into play. And this is where, uh, and this is how, really, uh, he curried favor with Queen Alakia, is he created the Ritual of Thorns, which let them still live above ground during the Scourge and in their own home, instead of having to dig down and live like dwarves, which really Queen Alakia was not happy with. Well, they did have some underground sections of the original care, yeah. but they did have a significant sort of above ground wooden citadel that failed. The Escalanus Rennell kind of has their thing as the magic Rennell, the magician Rennell, because they supply so many blood warders and have such a long yeah. history of magical research and knowledge. But as I've said with the other two Rennells we've talked about, that is not their only thing thing yeah certainly there are non-magicians that are part of the family mm -hmm. there are other sort of lesser renelles that are affiliated with them in the western reaches of the bloodwood which is where they're based out of but it's just the thing that they are best known for and it is where a lot of the plot hooks and adventure connections are going to be attached when you're dealing with them agreed so their ancestral home is on the western border of the Bloodwood, very, very far away from the Queen's Palace, which is on the eastern border. So they're about as far away, geographically speaking, as you can possibly get, which I think helps them in the long run, but we'll get to that in a little bit. Um, they do have a, an ancient tradition of following magical disciplines, but to Josh's point, that's not all that they are known for. It's just primarily what they are known for. Kind of like Elvis did movies too, but primarily he was a singer. Right. So they have other things that they're into, but what they're known for is one thing. Uh, this is, however, one of the oldest Rennells in Bloodwood. They began with a noble family from the Western Kingdoms. So they're kind of a import a little bit or travelers, per se. Uh, and they still, to this day, maintain considerable influence in many of the elven cities. Not just the Bloodwood, but the Western Kingdom cities as well. We'll get to them in a little bit. Their connection also with the Western Kingdoms and their origins deep in that area means that they have connections with Alakia, because Alakia also sort of presumably came from the Western Kingdoms, yes. at least the most recent <laughs> time. That's where she claimed to come from. <laughs> that's a whole separate episode. <laughs> <laughs> look, li li wait a few weeks. Um, I think we do like a little bit of our discussion with Lou does talk about her. Yeah, because it can't uh, not. A little bit. Because it can't not. Exactly. <laughs> but there is that definitely that sort of strong ancestral connection there with the Escalanus Rennell going back farther in Wormwood than Alakia's public history. Mm -hmm. Um, because they were around back with the, the time of Queen Fela. Queen Fela was the one that granted the warders permission to establish their research center in the heart of the woods. Yes. So this Rennell essentially curried favor, not just for the ritual of thorns, which came later in their dealings with the queen, but originally they had provided unique magic items unique spells, unique rituals that impressed the queen, and they came to prominence in the reign of Queen Phyla. Other things that they have done that are unique to them that actually curried the favor of the queen was that the Rennell created the Blood Warders. It was their idea, which were basically warrior magicians at the time, so that if they were going to be dual disciplined of any sort, 
this is where that kind of came from. And they were created to patrol their borders within the Bloodwood, keep people from coming in and going out where they shouldn't be. And they were also keeping any travelers safe. They had, they had safe passage with the Bloodwaters as kind of a, uh, like a secret service per se to yeah. take the travelers from within Bloodwood, lead them safely out so they wouldn't hit any pitfalls, bad creatures, whatever the case may be, so they can go back to where they came from uh, after their, their diplomatic visit was over. They weren't actually known as the Blood Warders until the transformation of the wood to the Bloodwood. They were known originally as the Queen's Warders. That was the title that they had up to the point that... The Ritual of Thorns. The Ritual yeah. of Thorns was enacted. <clears throat> and like many other things in the woods culture, there was kind of a shift that went along with that. It's not really delved into too much in the book, but I get the feeling that the warders originally covered duties that were both what are covered today by the current warders and by the Exolashers, which is another group of royal warriors. Mm -hmm. They're the ones, there are similar kind of duties that are performed by them. The Exolashers being more martial warriors, archers, swordmasters, that scouts, that sort of thing. Whereas the the warders at this point are more heavily focused on spellcasting and, and magic and enchanting and so, so forth. Fair enough. Uh, yes, they also created the ability to commune with nature, especially in the, sorry, commune with the bloodwood itself, where they were able to keep paths clear of undergrowth, magically speaking, and communicate long distances through the trees themselves, like the old fashioned telephone game we all played in kindergarten, but they could do it through the trees themselves. So that is their communing, communing with wood spirits. So I think yeah. I find that in and of itself, just a fantastic uh, ability to use when they're going through when just as something that these blood warders can do that nobody else really can. Hasn't been explored much in any of the rest of the game. Yeah. So, they were granted their private community in the forest's heart for magical research, and this is where we're getting to uh, why uh, Kethos wanted this here, to create the Ritual of Thorns, and the Ritual of Thorns itself was hailed as saving the elven people, and he was therefore ha hailed as the savior of the elven people, kind of put him on par with the queen. Yeah, the establishment of the warder's sanctuary in the heart of the wood predated the scourge and the construction of the care. As you'll perhaps recall, the entire palace was magically transported from where it originally was and where it stands now mm -hmm. into the wooden citadel that was constructed around the forest's heart. That was where the woods citadel was established yeah. both, you know, above ground and with some underground Space. spaces as well. And so it was perhaps fortunate in a way that it was there. But I think also the reason that it was established there in the forest's heart was because of a desire on the part of previous Escalanus and warder magicians to study and understand the pattern of the wood itself, yeah. probably due to immortal elf dragon rivalry shenanigans. <laughs> Understanding and controlling the pattern of the wood would allow for protection from or allow them to secure control of the wood mm -hmm. from Alamez or prevent Alamez from exerting influence over the wood as a result of his knowledge about the place. Yeah. So there is, I'm sure some deep level immortal elf dragon rivalry that underlaid the foundation of the warders and why they wanted to be the, where they were and stuff like Absolutely. that. Absolutely. So this is the, 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 the genesis of, and the, the, the ground floor of the Escalanus Renell. There's a whole lot more going on especially over the last 20 years, because for the last 20 years, the Escalanus blood warders have defied Queen Alakia and they have been meeting with the Denerastus clan and the Dener and they, they pay for the, the Denerastus 
with true elements of uh, true wood, especially. And the clan, the Zenerasa clan shares their magical knowledge with the Escalanas because the Escalanas are trying to kind of undo the ritual of thorns. Yeah. While he is hailed as a savior of the wood, now that the scourge is significantly over, Kethos does not agree with Alakia's continued performance of the ritual. He understands probably as well as, if not better than anybody else, what is at stake with regards to the condition of the wood and the corruption that is growing from its heart, what that potentially means and everything else. He knows how intertwined the lives of the Blood Elves are with the wood itself and probably has some ideas as to what the consequences of letting things continue as they are would be, but also what stopping it would do. Yeah. It mentions in the Elven Nations book that his latest attempt to extend his life hasn't worked. Mm -hmm. His time is running out and he is hoping in some way to redeem himself and to be the savior of Elvenkind again, but in a way that defies Alakia's desires. We've talked at great length about <laughs> Alakia's desires and why they are the way they are. Yes. That she certainly would have an interest in ending the ritual as well, but there's a whole lot of pride and hubris mm -hmm. that goes along with that. Yes. Because he, he has no problem helping the Elven Peach helping the vast majority of the elven people despite her wishes because it's better for, you know, the thousands of elves versus her ego. You know, he's okay with breaking. He's like, yeah, but this is better for everyone, not just you. Right. The Denerastus have significant knowledge about blood magic. Yes. And so allies of convenience, it's not that the Escalanus trust them. Mm-hmm. In fact, they trust them even less in the wake of the assassination of Varilus and the coup performed in Jerus, mm -hmm. with the revelation that the Denerastis are working to take over things and overthrow things and cause problems. The Denerastis certainly are interested in getting their hooks and getting some leverage over the Escalanus mm -hmm. because that's blackmail material. Yeah conceivably that they could arrange for that information to fall into the hands of the queen and cause all sorts of problems for Kethos and the Rennell in general. A Rennell that has for the past several centuries been loyal to the throne mm -hmm. that supported the decision to not go with the Theron rights of protection in passage. Yeah. That supported you know, everything that has gone on with regards to... Alakia's decisions. Alakia's decisions and all the rest of that. And Kethos is no longer in line with that. Mm -hmm. And has been exiled from court as a result of his disagreements with Alakia. Yeah. He's not been ex exiled from the wood, but he's no longer welcome in court, at least for now. Yeah, for now. <laughs> because Alakia. Because she is a garbage person. <laughs> well, all you really need to say is because Alakia, and I think everybody understands what we're talking oh, about. Oh, totally so. So let's talk more about Kethos real quick, because he's one of those people of note in the essay from the Elven Nations books. There's going back into fourth edition now. Um, yes, he is the elder leader, but of, of an advanced age, to your point. Uh, he is actually born before the Scourge, and he's been keeping himself alive with this ritual to extend his uh, life unnaturally so. He's not immortal, as we have uh, come to recently find out. At least he's come to recently find out. Um, but the other secret is that he's Alakia's on-again, off-again lover, basically at her discretion, because Alakia. Um, he did create the, ba the basis, 80-90% of the Ritual of Thorns, and he was the first person to undergo it to prove to Alakia that it could work. So that's the thing. And the Ritual of Thorns really is binding a wood spirit to your bones. And so that's right. Yeah, that's the whole complex. It magic. is forming a complex possession of sorts with a wood spirit into the elf. That is what generates the thorns. And then the blood that drips from the thorns is what is powering 
the ritual yeah. that remade the pattern of the wood to reinforce its protections against the horrors in a significant act of renaming magic mm -hmm. that is uh, causing lots of problems. Absolutely. And to your point, he has withdrawn from the court uh, politics over the last 20 years after his banishment for that year and a day or so, uh, letting him do more focus on trying to undo the bloodwood because you have to undo this ritual spell that is, as you said, intertwined in complicatedly intertwined uh, between the blood that comes out of the blood elves themselves, drips onto the ground and goes into the forest, feeds the oak, feeds oak heart. And, you know, it's a never ending cycle. So how do you stop that? Plus rename the place. And yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's a big old, massive, powerful tangle of magical stuff for lack of a better term. And it is very, very complex to undo if it's not done carefully, the consequences to the wood and or the blood elves are catastrophic. Yes. There is no telling ultimately what may end up happening. It could be that you could stop the ritual, undo the ritual, no longer have them be blood elves, but that could destroy the wood. Mm -hmm. It's possible that the destruction of the wood because of the connection of the elves with the ritual could cause problems for them. And it could be just as devastating in terms of how many people might end up dying from it as died from the ritual in the first yes. place. Set of circumstances. We've talked about this before. The redemption of the wood, the potential resolutions to that are epic. They are end game type massive final goals. It's the sort of thing that would be the, the capstone of a long term yeah. powerful campaign that would involve not just the Bloodwood, but probably significant interest from both Shosara and Sariatha, as well as the Seekers of the Heart and other elves of the Barsavian diaspora. Mm -hmm. Probably interest as well from Thera and anybody else with significant political interest in the <laughs> area just because of the stakes involved and the power of the wood as a as an entity yeah right now the wood isn't able to exert a lot of influence because of their self-imposed isolation mm -hmm. but if that were to change as a result of the the ritual being done there's a lot of fallout that could come about as a result of that absolutely and nobody really knows exactly what that would be which is fantastic uh, totally that's you get to make that up for your game game masters uh so i wouldn't exactly imagine using kethos as an npc but he's he should be lurking in the background if you're going to be using this renell in, in any way shape or form because he is a powerful magician he's studied the elementalist discipline wizard discipline and nethermancer discipline he's got all three of those my guess is at a very high circle for all of them trying to undo this ritual. But because he's not in court anymore, somebody has to be in court. And that person is Orlando Escalatus. He's the current consortus of the Elven Court on behalf of this uh, Renell. He is a longtime friend of Kethos and a very, very trusted advisor. He is also the spy master. They, together, Kethos and Orlando, staged a falling out on purpose with Kethos... Um, this is their like master stroke to get Kethos out of the spotlight so he can focus on this spell, only this spell, that's it. Orlando is the otherwise spy master. Feeding information about what's going on at court back to Kethos without hopefully other people realizing that that's going on because presumably this longtime friendship has fallen apart over this disagreement about the Ritual of Thorns. Orlando continues to be loyal to his friend, but any time that they sort of appear in public together, they have this yes. act of being very cool and aloof and distant so that nobody suspects that they are continuing to work as closely as possible. Orlando, I imagine, is definitely keeping tabs on who might be secretly expressing some concerns over yes. what's going on with the ritual the Seekers of the Heart are not actually someone that Kethos is interested in working with, because despite his disagreement with Alakia, he is still a loyalist to the throne, to the court, and 
the Seekers of the Heart really are looking for revolution. They are looking to upend and completely... Yoke of... Yeah. Shatter the elven court because they believe that that is the only way that the ritual is going to end. And that is by overthrowing yeah. Alakia and the court in particular. And Kethos yeah. doesn't want that to happen. But any kind of adventure or storyline that is going to be involving the redemption of the wood, whether the player characters mm-hmm. are involved with the Seekers of the Heart or some other elven powers or perhaps even getting hired as outside agents by the Escalanus, that is the Rennell that is going to feature significantly in connection with any of those kinds of storylines because it is such a personal focus yeah. for so, since Kethos. they're keeping the meetings with since Kethos is keeping the meetings with the Denarestis on the down low, the Denarestis are traveling into the Bloodwood because it's basically, as I said, their ancestral home is on the western border, closest to Iopos where the Dinarasas are located. And they are also, uh, uh, Kethos is using Oak Heart's acorns to try and make a new forest's heart. So that might be kind of an inroad or an adventure hook, maybe. Yeah. The acorns of Oak Heart, these are artifacts. These were <clears throat> gifts that were given by the queens to notable individuals, both within Wormwood, as well mm-hmm. as the diaspora of other elven nations, as things that were collected and sent away before the Ritual of Thorns, there is some speculation that they contain aspects of Oakheart's original pattern, that is one that was not warped by the Ritual. So a lot of folks are interested in collecting as many of them as possible, either to gain insights into a way to restore Oakheart's pattern and heal the corruption and damage that it is suffering as a result of the Ritual of Thorns, or possibly yeah. to grow a new Oakheart, to grow a new one to replace the damaged one. The Bloodwood are interested in these. Seriatha mm-hmm. and Shosara are both interested in these because there is an argument that could be made that if a new oak heart is grown, but it is grown somewhere other than the wood, then that place where the new oak heart is could yeah. claim to be the proper seat of elven culture. And so that is sort of a through line, a MacGuffin hunt for this elven nation's book in this sort of post Second War era. And it was even a little bit beforehand, but the focus is even greater now because... There are a lot of them, like the exact number is not known, but it's known that there are a lot of them out there. And so it is very easy to make the collection or transport or discovery or anything connected with them would be interesting to a lot of people for various reasons. I do want to clarify that in recent years, the meetings with the Denarastis are no longer happening within the wood. They don't trust the Denarastis well enough to let them in anymore. They meet with them outside the wood proper. And there is certainly an opportunity connected with that for independent agents to be hired by either the Escalanus to do scouting or security for a meeting site or some other power or person that has learned about them and wants the group to find out what's going on. The Devanar, I imagine, would be interested in the potential... Aspects? (laughs) treasonous aspects where they are in a way even more loyal that kind of information that kethos has been breaking the queen's yeah. edicts beyond just disagreeing with her is actually meeting with the denarastus that's certainly leverage that they would like to take advantage of in some respects other houses as well certainly the escalonis with the status that they have lots of people would be interested in or 13. Taking yeah. them down a peg or three. <laughs> or 13. Because there's a lot of political machinations and perhaps Game of Thronish style one upmanship and manipulations oh, yeah. and political stuff that goes on. There's a lot of fascinating potential in the Bloodwood, and I've expressed this before. The biggest problem mm-hmm. with it is that it is 
isolationist and is difficult for non blood elves to really get involved in what's going yeah. on with it the is. internal politics tough. of the wood. But of course, that is something that could be manipulated if the Escalanus want to meet with folks inside the wood. I imagine they would have be able to swing some connections with the Karathaska to help people get into the wood through mm -hmm. sort of the black market means from Ker Eidolon, from there be escorted up into the western reaches where they could meet with Kethos. Exactly. And perhaps Because, yeah, I wouldn't trust anybody either after, you after literally assassinated King Varolus. Yeah, you don't get to come into my wood either because the queen, no, if you can get to get Varolus, then you can get to the queen. So, pass. <laughs> we'll meet you somewhere else. Yeah, it's not even necessarily the queen. I think it's just a general wariness of potentially giving the Denerastus access to things that could yeah. allow them to leverage some kind of power mm -hmm. of any sort, magically speaking, yeah. over the wood or people in it. I think because of the history that the warders and the Escalanus have in terms of studying and understanding the pattern of the wood, which is what eventually yeah. sort of led to their ability to do the Ritual of Thorns, they know how dangerous it would be for the Denerastus to be able to get access to Fair. There is one more pattern. person we got to talk about in the Escalanus Rennell. Now, this person may or may not be real. They may be a legend. This is completely sort of separate from everything else that we've been talking about. I like it. I think it's cool. It's neat. It's a little bit of ghost story, as you said. We're not even sure necessarily that the person is real or exactly what's going on. But this is another member of the Escalanus, another warder, that in the early days of the Scourge, mm -hmm. prior to the Ritual of Thorns being enacted, something happened and yeah. she left the Citadel, presumably heading west back to the Escalanus family home and was ne'er heard from again. In fact, most is, people have even yeah. sort of forgotten that she exists that with the number of other folks that died during the Scourge as a result of the failure of the Citadel and the Ritual of Thorns, yeah. she's kind of a footnote in the Scourge histories of, of the wood. And yet, <laughs> some strange things have been afoot yeah, in the Western Forest. Because she stalks the woods of the Western border on full moon nights, supposedly, by legend, drinking the blood of whoever. So this is kind of a cross between a werewolf... Legend and a vampire legend kind of mixed into one, but only for this one Rennell, because she was a member of the Escalanus Rennell. Yeah. And it's not clear whether she is mm -hmm. still alive and carrying on like this as a result of perhaps some kind of magical thing she did herself or, or a horror curse mm -hmm. or whether this is perhaps some kind of spirit. It's just a, this weird kind of ghost yes. story, mysterious figure in the Western woods that causes problems for people. And actually, historically speaking, from a folklore perspective, the vampire and werewolf Fair. stories kind of all come from the same original source. Yeah. Yeah. Different branches that grew out of the same root. But there is this kind of like cross. It is the closest thing at the moment officially in Earth mm -hmm. Dawn to a sort of vampire type situation. And that is certainly something that could be of interest. Another reason, perhaps, that independent agents from outside might be brought in to try and uh, investigate or deal with this matter. Absolutely. And her name is Eleutheria Escalanus. Yeah, and there are some rumors of, about why she left, whether her mind broke in some capacity and she just wandered out or whether she was subtly exiled as yeah. a result of some disagreement with the queen or various other things. Again, as kind of a footnote in the histories of the blood wood at that time, there's not a lot of information that's really known, just a few rumors. This is something that is just kind of a neat mystery that's in there for game masters who so choose to flesh out and investigate further. Yeah. If you've got a party that's camping near the Bloodwood on the western slope, western side, western border, but aren't really going to try and go in, 
yeah, throw a theory at him and have some fun. See if you can tease him in, tease him into the Bloodwood in some other way like that one. Who knows? But uh, any further thoughts on the Escalanus Rennell? I think they are significantly historically important to the Bloodwood. Yeah. Not sure exactly how to weave them in currently, but that's for the Game Masters to decide. They are definitely going to be important in games, like I said, that are dealing with the redemption or the attempted redemption Mm -hmm. of the Bloodwood in some capacity, whether that is by magically undoing the ritual, whether that is by healing Oak Heart, creating a new Oak Heart. Trafficking in acorns. (laughs) Yeah, whether the Escalanus are going to end up being sort of another party that is running counter to the Seekers of the Heart if the group ends up working with them. As an outside group, it is likely, or it would not be unusual for adventurers to be working with the Seekers Mm -hmm. in order to do that. But unless you are having a game that is interacting significantly with magic in the wood and elven politics within the wood... Unlike the Karathaska. Davinar. Well, the Davinar less so, but the mm-hmm. um, the Marshall ones who we haven't talked about yet. Oh. The Talshara. Oh, yeah. Because they are both have a notable presence at Care Eidolon. Mm-hmm. Those two Rennells are the ones more likely for groups outside the wood to interact with in a traditional game. Gotcha. Assuming that they, you know, are going to... Care Eidolon. Understood. So, folks, if you have any questions for us about the Escalanus Rennell or any of the other Rennells we either have talked about or will talk about, please drop us a line at edsgpodcast at gmail.com. And until next time, undo the Ritual of Thorns for your legend. Good night, everybody. Good night, everybody.